So let's make an assignment real fast. Research available desktop environments and select one of your choosing. There are no wrong answers except for KDE Plasma. <laughs> hey there, I'm Gardner, your friendly neighborhood developer advocate with Linode. In this video, I wanted to help you set up and get started with Moodle. Moodle is a robust and open source learning platform enabling online education for more than 200 million users around the world. Create personalized learning environments within a secure and integrated system built for all education levels with an intuitive interface, drag and drop features, and accessible documentation. Uh, the first thing you're going to need is a Linode account. If you don't have a Linode account, you can head down in the description to get some free credit to get you started. So once you're all logged into the dashboard, go ahead and uh, click on Marketplace here on the left. We'll let this load and then we'll scroll down here to Moodle right there. All right. Once we've selected Moodle here, we're going to scroll down. Now this is where we input some of the options that Moodle needs uh, in order for it to be able to be set up on our Linode. So we're going to go ahead and fill out this form. So the Moodle admin password. Now this is, as it sounds, uh, the admin password for your Moodle instance. So we'll go ahead and just supply one. Our Moodle admin email, let's just say no reply at linodians.net. So Next, we have to add a, uh, a password for the MySQL database. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, set that up. And then we need a user password as well. So the other one was the root password, as specified by root. And then we have database password. All right, the username for Linode's admin slash SSH user. Okay, we're going to say something like we're going to say Gardner because that's my name. Uh, you can use whatever you want here as long as you follow the, uh, the requirements. We're going to set up a secure password here. That's secure enough. Um, and under advanced options, we're going to see uh, that we're, we're looking for an API token. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll all the way up to the top. We're going to click on the account drop down and we're going to either middle click or control click on the API token. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to open up a new tab up here. Uh, so then we can create a personal access token. And I believe that the only privilege that this token needs is going to be uh, read and write for domains. So we're going to give it that privilege and then we're going to uh, create a name for this. So we'll call it Moodle. Moodle, that's a good word. And then we're gonna hit at create access token. And now we're going to copy this to our clipboard. Um, and once we've closed this uh, modal box, we're never gonna be able to get this back again. So we'll have to delete it and create a new one. Um, so we're gonna close that. Now we've copied it to our clipboard. We're gonna go over here, back to where we were, and we're gonna scroll down uh, to the API token. And we're gonna paste that in right there. Now, if you don't wanna give uh, Moodle and API token. You don't have to do that. You can configure your DNS manually. Every field underneath the advanced options is completely optional. Uh, so we're, what we're going to do is we're going to supply the domain name for the Linode's DNS record. So that's going to be, uh, let's say Moodle. And then the domain name is going to be linodians.net. Uh, the SSH public key used to securely access the Linode via SSH, we're not going to supply that right now. And uh, the disable root access over SSH, uh, I'm not going to do that, but you can if you if this is going to be like an actual uh, instance that you're going to continue to run, then you'd probably want to click yes here. All right, let's scroll down. Uh, the only image we can use is Ubuntu 20.04, I believe. Yep. So we're going to leave that as is. We're going to select a region. Uh, I'm going to choose Newark, New Jersey, because I'm in the Northeast United States. Um, then we're going to scroll down here to Linode Plan. Now, according to the official Linode documentation, uh, we can use any size Linode we want. So I'm going to click here to the shared CPU and I'm going to choose uh, the Linode two gigabyte plan. And that's $10 a month. That's a pretty good deal. Then we're going to scroll down. Uh, Moodle US East is fine. Uh, let's choose a root password. 
And let's go ahead and scroll down. Now we don't need to do anything with VLANs and we don't need to do anything with backups or private IPs. Uh, that's gonna be up to you to determine what you're gonna do here. But I think we're good. So now we can just hit create Linode. And after a few minutes of provisioning, uh, this Linode should be up and running and the Moodle uh, software stack should be ready to go. So I'm gonna pause here and I'll be right back. Okay, it looks like our Moodle instance is at least running. So if we click the Lish console, we can actually be able to see what's going on on the machine. And it's actually still setting up Moodle. So we'll give it a few more minutes uh, in order to get Mo the Moodle software stack ready to go for us. Uh, but then we should be ready. All right, it looks like Moodle has been completely set up. So the next thing that we wanna do now is click on network. And let's actually go down here and we're gonna select our reverse DNS. And we're going to create a new tab and hit enter. That will actually take us directly to the uh, Moodle installation that we have set up. Now let's go ahead and click log in at the top right. And we're gonna use the uh, information that we used earlier. And we're gonna use Moodle as the username. And we're gonna use the password that we specified uh, for the admin account. And we're gonna hit remember username and hit log in. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is set up our site here. So let's go ahead and change the name to Gardner Bryant's Linux course. <laughs> uh, we're gonna set this as uh, do not list my site. Uh, the other options here will let uh, Moodle collect a little bit of information about the courses that you're providing. Um, description, learn Linux in a friendly and relaxed atmosphere. All right, we got English, we have country. Let's select the United States. We can uh, determine if we wanna have any of these setups here. Uh, I, don't, I don't want any of the newsletters or anything. So we're gonna go, um, we're gonna agree to the uh, privacy policy here. Now you don't have to do this. You can click the skip if you want, but, but you know what? I like Moodle, so I'm, I'm gonna register my site. So I think the first thing we wanna do is actually set up a course that people can sign up for and take. So once we're signed in, we wanna click Site Home and then add a new course. And we'll give it a name. Let's say uh, Linux 101. The course is short name. We'll just say Linux 101 again. Course category. We say miscellaneous, course visibility, show or hide, course start date, let's say the 20th, sure, why not? And let's say the end date is the 30th. Um, let's say the, core, uh, the course ID number, let's just say L101. Let's provide a course summary, so in this course, you'll learn the 101 about Linux. Um, cool. We can add images if we so choose. Uh, they allow PNG, GIF, and JPEG, of course. Um, course format, single activity format, social format, topics format, weekly format. We can just stick with topics format. So most of the other options here are optional. You can rename the uh, the different roles in the in the course. Um, so now we can hit save and return because um, we filled out most of the most of the stuff. If we click on this, now we can add topics or modify the topics. If we turn on editing, of course. <laughs> let's say uh, let's talk about um, desktop environments hit enter to save, uh, and then we're gonna click add an activity. And we can add assignments, we can add books, um, we can have a chat that people can use, um, database, external tools, feedback, all of these different tools that we can use to actually set up a course uh, that someone can have. So let's make an assignment real fast. Let's give it a name. Choose your desktop environment. And we'll say uh, research available desktop environments and select 
one of your choosing. There are no wrong answers except for KDE Plasma. <laughs> so then we'll scroll down once we have the description in there. Uh, allow submissions from starting on the 19th, ending on the 26th. Cutoff date, we don't need. We can enable that if we want. Uh, we don't need it though. Uh, remain, remind me to grade by the November 1st, which is really nice feature. Uh, submission types, we, we can select uh, file submission or online text. We can enable a word limit of, well, let's just say 200, whatever, doesn't really matter. We don't need file submission either. We'll just say a word limit. And again, these are mostly going to be pretty standard. Uh, and if you want to have any of these be set as a default, uh, as the administrator, you can actually go into uh, the site administration. So let's do that right now. Site administration. Um, and then under courses, we can salute, uh, select course default here somewhere. Where the heck is it? I just saw it. Course default settings. And all of these are going to be uh, the default settings for each course. And, and yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. This is actually a very powerful platform for developing courses. Um, let's go to, uh, we don't need any of these. Let's see. Maximum grade, scale, yeah. All right, so most of these are unnecessary uh, or the default works just fine. So we're just gonna hit save and return to course. And now we can add another activity and we can say, uh, there's a book that I want you to read. Linux is easy by Yarn and Brian, which is a book I have yet to write. <laughs> uh, read the book and let me know what you think. And we can just hit save. And now you gotta read the book. Uh, this is super cool. Let's do one more thing. We're gonna go down here to topic two. We're actually going to ramp things up in difficulty. And we're gonna go bash scripting. <laughs> Uh, and then we're going to uh, add a new activity. Let's do lesson. And we can do shell scripting and uh, provide a description. But we're just going to hit save and return to course. And when we're here, we can actually uh, edit this. So we can add a content page. And what this does is it lets us uh, add different content that the user can click through. Um, we can do multiple content pages. So a couple of years ago, I was dating this girl named Chris and she needed something very much like this. She was teaching people at her job how to use the product um, that was that they that the company was selling and you know what moodle would have come in handy because she was using a uh, powerpoint presentation to do all of this uh, this is a much better solution than using powerpoint but here it is this is how you create courses and uh, create new assignments and other projects that need to be done uh, for each uh, project and I, I think that this is a very handy tool uh, that I will probably end up using for any number of things, uh, probably training definitely for my company. Um, I think that this would be really useful to have. Uh, I think that's going to do it for now though. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, if you like this video or you, if you have questions, um, you can leave a question down below and uh, the Linode support team will try and uh, answer them for you. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. You can also subscribe to this channel uh, if you wanna help out what we're doing here on the Linode YouTube channel. Uh, I think that's gonna do it for now though. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.